Welcome to the McGolf Shop. Today we're going to be talking about fitting some new stuff from Callaway uh, and a special anniversary for the day. All next on What's in My Drawers Golf Talk. Welcome back to What's in My Drawers Golf Talk. Jim McCleary here. And why is it What's in My Drawers? Because. Old club makers and club fitters are tremendous pack rats, and I'm no different. It's about what was in the drawers of the shop, and it's turned into a worldwide discussion, and we enjoy it greatly. So if we didn't get it beforehand while I was talking, maybe on mute, that we're going to talk about the new Callaway offerings. We're going to talk about uh, some fitting stuff and an anniversary that is special for the week. All right, so let's get started. <coughs> And I'm also at the very end of that cold that I had at the, at the end of last week, too. <laughs> so, oh, let's get taken off here. All righty. So, what did we do in the shop? Well, we did that one. That one is uh, some uh, 21 Apexes. And we put some new custom ferrules on it with some... Uh, Dynamic Gold X100s with a series of white and black grips in order to make them look pretty decent. And oh. so two different drivers, same kind of shaft, just new and old. I know you can't really see that too much, but what that was is that was, uh, oh my. What is going on? It won't come off. There we go. Technical difficulties with the mouse. Anyway, the uh, what it was is two different uh, Acra I series, the same model, different paint jobs going into two different clubs. So there's that one. Uh, finally had a weekend where I could really concentrate on my vehicles. So I did something like that. I had to do the hood because it had the Navy flag in it. And uh, we got the the McGolf one Tahoe going. So we're happy with that. And while we were out there doing that, we did a little bit. I haven't done a barbecue picture in a while and some chicken. <clears throat> the bottom is the, obviously the stuff that was just without sauce and the stuff is on top with the sauce. So it was a good day all in all or a good weekend all in all. So there. All right. Anniversary, 19 years, 19 years, Miss McGolf and I have been doing this. And that was starting this month. Uh, so congratulations to Mrs. McGolf for staying around for 19 years while we're doing this crazy stuff. Uh, very good. All righty. <clears throat> All right, fittings. We'll do the fittings part first. We've gone through, so, uh, you know, we're just going to get kind of philosophical on fittings as opposed to this. We're going to keep pounding on this one since of the, you know, number seven, uh, Golf Digest, right there. Golf Digest, uh, best America's best club fitters, that kind of thing, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to go with that. So that uh, that to do, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about fittings almost all the time here. So philosophically, you know, you hear the idea, well, I'm not good enough for a fitting, and no. So. Is there a point of which that you wouldn't get a fitting? The answer is yes. Um, if you were just starting out and you did not been golfing for very long, say just a couple of months, uh, I don't necessarily know if you'll get the best out of a fitting uh, because you're still learning the game and you know, they say, oh, you got to be repeatable in that. Well, not necessarily on that either. It's just that you haven't trained the golf muscles yet or have picked up enough to to actually benefit from the fitting okay now if you're extremely short or are extremely tall and what i mean by that is somebody above six four and above or somebody around five oh five seven and below then you might you might benefit from at least getting the length of the clubs checked so you can at least make consistent contact and have a little bit more fun. Now, <clears throat> or if you have some sort of medical issue, maybe you've had a stroke or something along that line, then yeah, maybe we want to check on stuff. 
but a person that's been playing, say, six months or better and pretty regularly, uh, been playing a year, fairly athletically talented uh, right off the bat, then, yeah, maybe that that's the point at which you would probably benefit uh, from a fitting. Now, who benefits the most? Uh, beginner players, right? The, only because statistically you have the biggest room for improvement. So if you're not breaking 100 and you've been playing golf for, say, a year or two, then, yeah, chances are you could probably, there's no probably, you would benefit from a fitting. Uh, now, do pros get fit? Yeah, all the time. They get checked all the time. Now, they do like certain things about, uh, about golf clubs, and they have the skill sets to understand what they're looking at. But every once in a while, they find, you know, maybe a tweak here or there. Billy Horschel was a perfect example of it this week. Uh, he went from playing, well, not well, to playing very well, and it was a lie angle change. He had no idea that his lie angles were out. Well, you know, a quick lie angle test, and voila, there you are. And they matched a fitting that the guy had been in a long time ago. So those are the different things. And we're talking, and if you're talking about, you know, pros not getting a lot, we're talking about a guy missing cuts to a guy almost winning a tournament. So that's huge, right? So the guy, you know, so everybody, what I'm getting at is everybody can benefit. Just depends on what you're looking for. All right. I've had folks come in here just wanting new shafts and end up walking away with whole brand new sets because they couldn't, they thought that the head that they had was fine. It was the shaft that was causing them grief when it was just the reverse. The head was what was causing the grief and the shaft was just fine. I've had other people come in here thinking that, they needed longer clubs because they were taller. And because they were taller, they also had super long arms and actually walked out of here with clubs that were a half of an inch short than what they started with. We've also come in here with guys that were swinging at 120 mile per hour plus, which easily could have put you into a 2X, and I've got them in a stiff because of the way that they swing. So I had one guy that had all these goose eggs across the top of his uh, across the top of his driver, and that was because he was coming in at a steep attack angle. And uh, so I teed it way down and watched him just start striping it. And, you know, all my buddies told me I needed to tee it higher. Well, that's because that's what they read in the last article of a golf publication. So getting fit by somebody that knows what they're doing, regardless if it says Golf Digest up there or not, uh, but somebody that is certified been doing it and is pretty good. And you can do that by calling them up and asking them how they fit. If you like the way it sounds, then try it out and go from there. <clears throat> okay. So that was on my soapbox for a little bit. So I am part of Callaway as a staffer, but that doesn't stop me from pinging on them. Anyway, got stuff here. And, and, they're, and we're going to talk about the different, this is the uh, muscle back. Let me see if I can call that guy up. Muscle back. There's a muscle back picture for you. All right, the Apex 24 is a body and face forged as a one piece in a proprietary forged process from 125 carbon steel. That's actually kind of soft. Uh, Progressive CG design for added control. Uh, that would be something like that. All right. You see how the, the CG is low at the top end, middle in the middle, a little higher, and that's to control ball flight. Dynamic sole design for enhanced turf interaction. Uh, let's see. You can see it right here on the bottom. If you look like right there. Right there, what that is is that means the leading edge is being killed, and that that sole right there is very very thin. I hope this is coming across because this is actually kind of cool. It's almost like a pointer thing. Uh, so, and then endless possible says uh, dual chamfer on the leading edge. That's the killed leading edge to get through the turf and the trailing edge provides relief after contact for enhanced feel, and so you can maintain speed through the. Maintain speed through the turf. So what does all that mean? 
what it means is is that the sole in the front has been the leading edge has been cur uh, killed with a kind of a relief that kind of curves like this and then it's like this at the end so that you're not hitting the trailing edge and that's somebody who takes uh, that's going to clip the ball not really take a monster do it and then uh, thinner top line longer blade links uh, and they bro they blend in this apex pros and and then they have some mm imm back weights to give fitters to dial in swing weight swing weight all right uh cavity backs <clears throat> cavity backs here we go i like this one this is the blow part man i love that see this is a little rubber piece or actually it's actually probably tungsten with a back weight right here and then this one is probably some carve out we'll figure out here in a minute the CB24 is a forged in a five-step process with the same steel, creating buttery soft feel discerning players crave. The body face are forged in one piece while MIM weights are placed strategically in the toe to perfectly balance the club head for workability. Normally when they say that, that means that uh, when they say that kind of stuff, what they're talking about is... Uh, that they don't they put the weights here in the in the tip so you don't overcook it and that's really what that is progressive cgs throughout the set very much in the same fashion as that again uh and then this dynamic sole design with a pre-worn leading edge to cut through the turf very much in that same uh that same killed spot right there in the front if you guys can see that like right there okay and then the uh Dynamic soul design, same thing, and combo sets where you can create the, uh, yeah, so what you can do is you can create combo sets with, uh, there are three There are three kinds here. There's a pro, there's a muscle back, and then there's the cavity back or player's cavity back. What they're talking about is being able to seamlessly make a combination set of all of these things to uh, see where they're at. All right, the pro. Now, the, the first one, the pure blade in a modern design, the ultimate tour iron, and this is exceptional distance and tour level precision. And it's going to look a lot like that. Now, if you notice, this one has a little bit more, a little bit more offset right here than, say, the other ones would. And then you'll see over here that this top line is probably going to be a little thicker because I believe this is going to be a hollow body design. And there, this is a perfect example of what they were talking about beforehand. So let's get to that. Uh, first time ever Apex Iron is a hollow body construction. Pairs of forged face and the 125 carbon steel to deliver premium ultra soft feel. And it's got urethane microspheres. So there's a layer of microspheres behind it to give it a softer feel. Uh, progressive face design for incredible distance control. And that means that uh, progressive means that there's going to be more offset at the higher end and less offset at the bottom, which I like. And then the turf interaction. So when they're talking about the turf interaction, here's the leading edge. You can see how it's killed right here, right? And then you see how it's kind of, if you look right there, right down that whole area, that's the, uh, the where it's beveled, right? Where it's beveled like that. That's what they're talking about. And then endless combina endless combinations again. So what you're looking there is that's a pro iron, and it what, the real funny part here is that the iron on the right looks like it has a deeper face than the than the iron on the left, and that could very well be by design. All righty, two more, two more, and then we'll get to it. All right, this is the UT, the utility iron. And pure power with complete control. And that one would be this guy. There we go. Same thing again. Uh, forged 455 cup face like that. Exceptional distance. Making the Apex UT and iron incredibly powerful worker and workable off the tee. The new Apex 24 is a, features a dynamic sole design pre-worn leading edge, which we know that. There it is. That's another good example of this. And this... That damn camera is shaking all the way too much. Uh, the new Apex Utility is more compact in shape than its predecessor with a slightly shallower face 
to promote a higher launch. Uh, let's see if I can. I don't think I have anything other than say that if this is actually a little thinner look in the blade, right? And we're going to go there. The UT irons are perfect complement to the Pro Series models. Whether you're looking for a driving iron or long iron replacement, the UT irons are designed to seamlessly blend with other Pro Series models to meet specific needs. So there we go. And last but not least, we are going to talk about that club. And this is the Utility Wood Tour Versatility Power and Control. Distinct club head shaping inspired by in-depth uh, feedback from the Tour Pros. They wanted a compact profile and shot shaping ability. AI designed bat wing structure, structure. You can see that on the bottom right there. So you can see that piece and that piece is their bat wing. All right. And specifically to cut through the turf, center of gravity is precisely precision in a neutral location for a combination of higher launch for steeper uh, landing angles. So it can basically what they're saying is it looks a lot. It's it looks like a little bit bigger version of a a uh, little bit bigger version of a hybrid, but it's a little longer like a wood. So it's kind of think of this as kind of a between a five and a seven wood and looking like a hybrid. And you see the weight there that's in the front. So you're going to get these more penetrating shots, right? And the the last one, if you're a, a, a faster swing speed kind of guy, the utility would work really, really well. Now, I did personally, I tried it. It wasn't for me because it was a bit flatter and I like a taller, more upright iron. So I'm more of a hybrid guy than anything else. Uh, the thing that's got my attention is that guy. Hollow Body Pro, I'm, I'm sporting the Rogue Pros right now. Uh, and I'd like to see what this one feels like. So when they come in, we're going to be doing a serious a serious review on them. I've already uh, told them to send everything they got left-handed. And uh, I think by the 15th to the 18th, we should be seeing something. So hopefully you see it from there. All right. <clears throat> Before we move on, like and subscribe if you would. Hit that bell and that notification down at the bottom. That way more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. And to tell your friends, whatever, in order for them, maybe they'll like a little bit of what they see here. Also, tomorrow... I do have a, a video ready to go, and it's gripping some Tiger Wood irons, and not only re-gripping them, but reshafting them as well, and it goes to Nebraska, go Big Red, and, and I talk a lot about grips, so it's kind of a two-fold thing, showing you about putting them together, but it's Golf Clubs Explained the Grip, so hopefully we get something going there. All right, let's talk. All the way to the top. All righty, Mississippi Wap Genius. <laughs> All right. 2020 Cobra uh, Forge Tech one length irons are listed as universal fit hosel for both 355 and 37. So I'm guessing I can install my 370 ship without problems, or should I email them and ask? So what this is looking like, I'm just going to call you genius. Yes, what you're asking me, should they go in there? The answer is yes. So the biggest, the two things you got to look at here on this one. Number one is at the bottom of this hosel, there's probably a slightly, probably something about yay long, a cavity at the bottom that if you were putting in uh, the taper tips, that it would fit into the bottom so it has something to wedge into against. Okay. And at the top, if you go to put it in and it still wobbles around, means that it requires what I like to call a centering ferrule, meaning that the shoulder that goes in there on this, when you go to put it together, is extraordinarily important. All right. Uh, and we talk about shoulders on the, what it does is if this is the, if this is your hosel area at the top of the hosel, it will go in and then come down and then go through there. And that, that coming in part is where the shoulder of the ferrule goes. And that's what helps hold that thing center and solid in the middle. 
So when you go to do that, just remember if you put it in there, it's wiggling around, that's what's going on. And you're really going to need the correct ferrules, which I believe are easy to get. All righty. Soccer has started, so my rounds are few and far between. Hope all is well. Dude, sorry to hear that, but I'm glad to see you get to say some soccer. Okay, adjustable drivers get moved for lie angle. Uh, not physically adjusted. There are, um, so when we talk about there, when they, you know, the answer is yes and some, okay? Uh, there are some that when you go to open it or give it loft, it tends to close. So it goes open, all right? If I, it goes open and then it goes closed. Now when it does that, it tends to raise up every so slightly too. Not a lot, right? Not a lot. And that was what, that's what it is. As a whole, not a lot. Now in the day, Taylor may had that big, uh, orange or was it copper piece that was in the back and all that was for is you would you can set it to close the face or whatever but that was only when it touched the ground all right it had to touch the ground in order for that to work if it didn't you could hold it and it would be they would be uh, non-impacted so to speak so that's that one there's Krister. Hello from a rainy Sweden. Well, it was we had what we like to call a gully washer here, Krister, and it was a whole bunch of rain in a short period of time. So, yeah. Shot a 77, 75 net, net. Finished third. Nice. That's way better than the first one. First time I managed to shoot under 80 in a competition. I did it with a half set. <laughs> Maybe you just got too many choices, Krister. Started to love playing comps. Weird thing is I play better when golfing with others than I play alone in practice. Well, it's always been the other way around. Well, good for you, man. I'd like to see that some more. All right. There's our buddy from California. How are you? JP Duncan, how are you, sir? Hope August is off to a great start. Yes, it is. We've been very busy with... Fittings of every shape and size. We've had brothers in here. We've had uh, newer golfers in here. We've had taller golfers in here. It's all been, uh, it's been very, very cool to see the different ways at going at things. Pardon me. And, uh, and some guys that, you know, they've just took up golf and started golfing and searched the internet for advice. Until, you know, I get them in here and I go, hey, you might want to try that. Oh, man, that's great. So that's what it is. Uh, so we did that. Let me try this here real quick. Oh, man, how about that? Okay. Matt's telling Christopher's like getting going. Yep. Okay, my T T KZG Tour Irons. Have three weight ports, the same as Idols SM stock screws, 393. I have mine at 797. And max 80 and two inches short. Well, it sounds like you've maxed it out. Let's see. What, are you hitting them good? Christopher says, thanks. More focused on short game practice only because I hit 69 greens and my stats. Um, there you go. Finding your weakness and making it better. That's nice. How would you fit me in your shop and what models do you have in your shop to fit to? I like to research things before I drive 2,000 miles. <laughs> well, yeah, I would too, bud. So what we do is we fit to length, and that's going to be important for you. And that's all these clubs right over here. And they're all same head shaft grip flex and everything except for length. And then what we do is we put some impact tape on it. And what I'm looking for is the tightest pattern that you can make, regardless of where it's at on the face, because it's still consistent. We can move you in and out on that face, either by weight of the club, lie angles, moving your bout, that kind of thing, in order to set you up so that you can hit the ball consistently. 
then we start talking about what kind of shafts and what kind of heads. And uh, right to this moment, I carry the Callaway, carry Mizuno, carry Srixon, carry Wilson. So that's where we would be. And look at the numbers in the back of the green. There you go. Because playing better since making them two inches on all the clubs. Well, dude, you're in 75, 76. You're not doing too bad. That's pretty awesome. Congrats. Jim Anderson, thank you for staying up this late, sir. Dysart Fife, Scotland, hope you're well. Excellent chat and show last week. Really enjoyable. Played nine holes at uh, Glen Roth and really had a good time. Good, good. John Cherry, how are you, sir? Adding weight to a golf club for whatever reason, it is always in the hosel. If so, does that make the club draw bias as opposed to center the weight like Edel and PXG? Okay, so here we go. We're going to use this one because this is the very first one that I grabbed. All righty. So, here's the th here, so what, normally what would happen is you would put weight on the end of the shaft and that would go in here in order to help uh, get swing weight. Now, can it make it draw bias? Yes, to an extent. If you put in two, four grams, even as high as six, would it make a draw bias? Chances are no, because you are making it, you're just making it weight so it feels better in the head. All right. Now, the, the move, in order to move the center of gravity of this club, in order to move that center of gravity of that club, you need to ride around 10 grams. And that's only going to move it from say here to like right there not very much all right so the now will that make it draw bias well, yeah right there's a whole lot of weight in the inside of that now what they do what you can do what you can do is on this particular section is that you can put lead tape across the back here it's not very sightly but you can put it right there and it'll get the swing weight down probably feel a little bit more uni uniform and it will drive the ball up into the air a little bit more. Now, if you took it and you put it right about here, right, you would still get that same uniform feel, but you're going to hit a more piercing shot because now you're putting weight that's going above the equator of the ball. Those are the two big things. Now, uh, idle or edel, uh, they have their screws and then PXG has a ton of their screws. There, there's a lot of changing going on there. And they, what they have over something like this is that they have, if you have the set of those set screws and a whole bunch of different weights, then you can really, really, really personalize the PXG. Does that happen very often? I'd have to say probably not. I'm not an expert. I don't deal with them too much. But I, I have this feeling that chances are not a lot of changes happen unless you're either very, very good and somebody's tweaked it to make it that way, or you've been to a fitter that has them that will try something. But uh, I know they try to stay away from that. Jack from Lombard, how are you, sir? I can't add weight in the hosel. I need no help drawing the ball. Now, in your case, uh, in your in your case, what it would be is maybe just a in your in your three weights that weight that's out here. You take the seven, put it here, and put the nine, and move it out here. It's going to be the same weight, but it help you from slowing it, slowing you from overcooking it. Michael, what do you say, sir? Good day to you, too. NP, howdy. All right. Here we go. What's Jack doing? When adding counterweight to a putter, what does it affect? Oh, uh, well, that's a, that's a wide open question, but 
So the idea of counterbalancing a putter. The idea of counterbalancing a putter is not necessarily to impact the putter, but the puttee. Okay? It's to impact you. And what that weight in the back of the hand, because that weight's going to sit right here depending on how much you put in there. Now, there are weights that will go further down and they'll sit like right in the middle of the two. That, you know, there's some that are out there for that. But as a whole, they're, you know, their weight's about this big to maybe about that big. And, and they sit in the back. And what they do is, is that they override the little muscles that are right here. So you don't get that. All right. And so when you go to bring the club back, it's a smoother transition back. And when you have a smooth transition back, you have a smooth transition forward. So you don't get back, you don't get like this and you don't get that. And so it overrides the little fast twitch muscles so that you come down and you come through. And then when you make that better stroke, you're finding the center of that putter even better and you're getting a better roll. It's, it's, and you can tell you've got the right one almost immediately because the roll of the ball changes noticeably to the naked eye, right? No more skidding, no more hopping, and it just takes off and it rolls and it goes exactly where you need it to go. That's really what back weighting does. Now, what does it do physically to the putter? It makes it lighter swing weight wise, but it also makes it heavier total weight wise. Outside of that, it doesn't do anything. But I do like it. I found it to be at least 98% efficient when, uh, when we do that, meaning that almost everybody benefits from back weighting, but you just got to have the right weight, right? I have a weight kit that starts at two in, in a series. Just to kind of give you an idea, there's a, a one, a two, a three, a five, a seven, a nine, and an 11. And those are all the weight numbers. And they're supposed to be very close to that number with a zero on the end. And in order to put them in there. And as a whole, between the 5 and the 11 is what really goes in. The lighter ones are more for full swing. And so, But everybody's a little different. And because of their set makeup could be a little bit different. You could have one of those really big grips on the end that's very, very light. And that's going to throw the balance that thing off, and you'd have to put some weight in the back. You could have one of those uh, mid-sized putters that's really, really heavy. Or those tank putter grips, right, that are really long. Those things are counterbalanced all on their own. <clears throat> it could do something like that. Hello, Al from the Space Coast. There's Matt. Right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that very much. Duque, what do you think is the best putter for a new golfer, a blade or a mallet? Ooh. Mm. An easier one to use. So if we take we got to take a few things into consideration, Duke. The number one is aligning, right? You've got to be able to align the putt. A longer sight line just makes it easier because you have more references to where you want to aim the face in order for you to square it up. The next one is uh, weight. In most cases, a slightly heavier putter works a little bit better. Most mallets come with those weights. Now, some of the putter blades do too, but if you can make it slightly heavier, then it becomes better that direction. And if you're a guy that goes out there and putts and you, you know, and you, you take it back and you wave it and you take, and it's straight on line, but you open and close, then a mallet with an S neck would be the way to go. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't like a lot of commotion, likes to look at things that are very square and very angled, then a blade putter because it fits that particular eye. Herman Ohm, how are you, sir? From SoCal. Thank you for uh, joining us. All right. Jim Anderson's thinking about going to graphite shafts and his irons. Played steel for 40 plus years. Do uh, you have any recommendations? 
Well, uh, KZG's graphite is very, very solid. Uh, if in the PGI, I would recommend wholeheartedly that fits a lion's share of golfers. That would be a good one. Uh, obviously, I mean, I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big Acra fan. Uh, and they have different ones. They got the TZ if you're a little bit more aggressive, the constant weight for that matter. And then the I series for an average release. But you got to get to somebody that's an Acra person. Um, somebody in something in more of the way of uh, more aftermarket -y that you can probably touch. Uh, I, again, I like the KZG. Uh, Oh, let me think about this one for a moment. I would think quite possibly there's the their Project X makes a a hazardous shaft that would work very, very well. I like them. I haven't had the opportunity to use the graphite design. I'm sure that it does work very, very well. I just haven't had a chance to use it. And then uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, there's one more that just used to stand out to me. Oh, uh, what am I thinking about? We have. I just did one. It wasn't too long ago. They turned out really, really good too. I can't remember. When it hits me, I'll let you know. But right now, the the KZG and the Project X are probably the way I would go. Sunny V, what do you say? A bit rainy here these days, but still getting out. Found something in my swing. Went 39.38. Well done, sir. You are the man. There's That would be Mrs. McGolf. All righty. Doug Perrette. Maybe you already talked about this, but what's going on with Pure Grips? I love them. They've been blowing them on since Jim demonstrated what's the best option. Well... They've decided to close their doors. I don't know why. Uh, maybe, you know, they, they did. What happened was is they jacked up their prices quite a bit. And maybe that turned a lot of customers off. I don't know. I do like the idea that they had the DTX for the guys that wanted a little bit more aggressive grip. But I didn't see it being extraordinarily popular. Uh, the normal like tour velvet like their pro model was probably the best seller I would imagine and they really you know in both cases they really needed to work on a really decent putter grip uh, but that yeah, things lasted very very long and they were nice enough folks but they didn't last however a uh, next best option if you like it is star uh, look up star grip that uh, Ander is the owner of that group and very nice guy and there's a lot of warranties on them and they're literally made out of the same rubber it's just a different pattern all righty dambunga really intrigued by the 24 muscle backs pre-worn leading edge looks nice but they're gonna have to be good because as you know i've been loving my yeah you've been doing really good with those i mean it's hard to it's hard to take something that's working out of the bag right They look very, very clean. I have to say that. I mean, if we go back there and we look at it, uh, let's see if I can get to it. I mean, if we look at that, that is extraordinarily clean. Let me get back to the comments. There we go. I mean, that's a, that's a nice look. I mean, it's got a little bolt on here in the back for maybe a little bit of swing weight. It's very, very clean right there. You can see the leading edge out there. I mean, standard issue stuff, right? It's a, but I mean, it's a good look. All right. There we go. Will there be a game improvement set of Apex coming out soon? I don't know. They've been very, very quiet on this. I know that they've, uh, what this looks to be here, Herman, is a kind of a combination of the you know they had the tcbs and the tcbs were very very nice but they didn't take off and we know that the apex is a good club 
across the set. Now the Apex always had the Apex, the Apex Pro, and then the Apex Pro was trying to be a blade in the beginning, became a kind of a hollow body-ish club. And now they're they're kind of cross the the two paths of TCB and Apex have kind of crossed. So I don't know if we're going to see a game improvement model out of that or not. I would like to see that. If any of those look to do what I think they're going to do for that old Apex kind of flight, it would be the Apex Pro. If you look, and most of the Apex the Apexes from in the day really didn't have a lot of offset, but they did have some. And then they had that, you know, a lot of weight across the bottom and a smaller cavity. Now, the, the Apex Pro has a lot of offset. Or not a lot of offset, the same amount of offset. A little more players-like, but there's a lot of weight in the bottom with that smaller cavity on the top, just not in the same fashion. And we, I think a lot of people will find that they can hit this Pro model pretty good. And that's what we're going to find out. But damn, but I know this man has the inside track on that stuff. First quarter of 24. Well, maybe we'll see that. Hopefully we do. Yes. It'll probably be, if they're saying that, it's probably something that they'll probably spring, they'll spring out at the PGA show next year. Swing it says he tested the you wouldn't love to. He was thinking about getting a 19 degree version to replace the three hybrid. There you go. Peter from Myrtle Beach, member of the McGolf Build Club. <laughs> yes, Peter has ordered some some Strixons. We ought to do something on the build. Peter, what do you want to see? Let's do a video on making your clubs. Is there something special you want to see? Let's make a video of that. Whatever he wants to see. Quad Rider. The stability shaft is amazing. That was that putter that we made for him not too long ago. We put the uh, BGT onto a spider. And uh, I did a little trimming on that to make it work and did pretty good. Uh, thank you for putting together for me. Shot in the 80s only. Look at that. Look at that. Well done, buddy. Well done. That BGT does make a difference, I have to say. Did you see Dawson shot 119 in the last two rounds of lift tournament this weekend? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess he shot a 59 or 58. That's pretty good. Uh, and he did it over here in West Virginia. And, uh, at the Greenbrier, so I mean that's not a uh, that's not a gimme course by any shape of the imagination. So, you know, I've always been a Bryson fan because he's always tried something different, and I always liked him because when he tried something different, they always, everybody gave him down the road, and he always ended up proving them wrong. I don't necessarily agree with him doing the whole live thing, but like I said before, if you go over there and you got it, you know, we know we know everybody why they went there. And if I was Bryson, I would have left too for all the prosecution that he took and for all the money he got. Why not? The dude, the dude will be set for the rest of his life. So good for them. All righty. Yes, they can. Most modern grips can be installed with air. Uh, I'd be careful with the wind, although I've seen it done. But that the the underlisting is not nearly as flexible as a typical rubber grip. Danny Freeman broke down and bought a Mez this weekend. <laughs> Did you see any of the three golfers this weekend using the broomstick? Yeah, the guy that won, right? The guy that won was uh, doing very very well. Lucas Glover, he was wearing he was using the Mez, and it was the kind where you got to hold it out here. And he was rolling the rock very, very well. So good for him. Good for the lab guys. I'm glad to see him collect a win. Jim Reynolds in Marathon, New York. Good to be here again. Well, I'm glad you're back, man. Thank you for coming. 
The 719 is for adjusting lie and face angle. Yeah, that that's the only reason why he did that, Scott, is because it would adjust. He came up with a an a, uh, adjustable hosel that would actually do that. Thoughts on Bryson using a crank driver this week? Well, I didn't know that he was. But, you know, he's, he's shucked a bunch of weight. So I don't know if he's still throwing it out there as far as he did, but he's in, you know, he's in very, very good shape. And uh, if crank, if he's throwing out a crank driver, good for him. If he's making it out there, I mean, it will, yeah, a crank driver is synonymous with long drive guys. And we all know his propensity for long drive type swings. So it tends to go together. And if he's throwing it down the fairway and shooting 58, it can't be all bad. All right. Chuck Sturm, or Sturm, sorry. Just had lumbar back fusion. Woo! I'm told I'll have limited rotation from before. Do you have any thoughts about changes that might need to be in my clubs? Yes, and only because I've seen this. So don't let the limited, you know, Number one, yes, you might have limited rotation, but, and I am not a doctor, and I've not stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. However, the guys that have been here that went through that, every last one of them has said, and I quote, I had to do the physical therapy or I'd be stoved up forever. So I would, you know, I would only recommend do the therapy, the stretching, once you're able to do it, and keep yourself limber so you can do some movement, right? You, you may not get back to 100, but what's 80%? Now, the other part is, is that the way that you reached back, you know, if you're one of these guys that got way back here and did this, you may only get right to here. You're going to have to learn a new abbreviated swing. And you're going to maybe a, a slightly smaller turn or a bigger turn on your lower body in order to get to the place where you're comfortable. Depends on how you come out of this, right? And chances are initially because you've been away from it, you're going to have a, a slower swing speed. So you're not going to see the distances that you got before. And you're probably either going to do one of two things. You're either going to not be able to close the club face and you're going to hit a lot of blocks or fades or you're going to keep the lower, bo the lower body quiet and you're going to hit a truckload of pulls. Now, I would not recommend the latter. I would much rather see you slicing it because that means you're making the turn. You're just not getting the club face closed. And literally the, what that is is timing. All right, timing. So before you go making any big switches, right, Chuck, before you go make any big switches, get through the physical therapy, get your strength back, and then go get tested, right? Go get another fit because what you went through, it would be a, a medical, a significant medical procedure, and you would want to get checked out prior to making any big uh, club purchases. But initially, uh, unfortunately, the golf game, unless you're supremely talented athletically, uh, chances are your game is not going to be very good. And you need to adjust to the new timing from not being able to reach back and think uh, three quarters to three quarters. Uh, one of the really great drills to do is what they call the L to L drill, where you start, you bring it back and you come to an L and you swing through and you come to an L and see if you can make that happen. And then it's just a matter of working back from there until you can't go any further and say, okay, that's my limit, and then make it, and then there you go. Hopefully that helps, and get recovered. All right. Michael, wish Mizunos would make these in left-handed. Yeah, you know, I was, huh, I was waiting on that. I was totally hoping that was going to happen. Uh, not to be, not to be, and they did really, really, they did really well with them last year. All right. 
Gabriel, would you recommend MOI matching all my golf clubs or use the swing weight instead? Oh, Gabriel, that's a chicken or egg question. MOI matching, uh, and I don't know about all the golf clubs, but at least sets of them for sure, because the driver and woods will have a certain different MOI than the irons will have an MOI, as I understand MOI matching. All right. Now, it doesn't mean that they'll be very far off, but they just will be different. Now, MOI matching is exactly what it is, moment of inertia, and it's a combination of weight length in order to get you where you want to be. Where swing weight is nothing more than putting it on a swing weight scale, and it's a test to give you a, a feel that's equivalent throughout the set, or at least throughout the set of irons and throughout the set of woods, because as we know, I'm trying to not put my foot on an extension cord. Uh, as we know that woods have different swing weights than irons as wedges and so on. So as long as, for me, as long as the total weight is comfortable for you and they have a, a what I would call an equivalent feel throughout the set, something that's comfortable for you, I would say that you are fine. Okay. I use swing weight personally here. I use swing weight as a measure of a consistent build. Does it have to be a certain mark? No, because the different weights of shafts versus heads and grips can throw this thing off in an instant. And so you have to be very careful with that. MOI matching, of course, also takes that into consideration. Uh, and with swinging on, uh, well, actually, now it goes like that, but in order to get it matched up. Now, I know guys, I know club builders that are very, very, very good that swear by MOI matching and have left swing weight matching ages ago. Personally, I just have not wrapped my head around how to measure that. I know about swings and how they would do this. It's very, very, it's very, very guess like in that I throw a club at you and you say, yeah, I really like the way this feels. It hits the best. And then you go measure it and that's your number versus, you know, uh, different techniques in order to determine whether or not you would like a heavier or lighter club. All righty. If you were building or making an anti-hook build, would you consider hazardous black, atmos black, tensai, pro white or orange? Well, certainly, some, so the, the black, the Atmo black, and this Tensai white are all very, very stout, very, very low torque clubs, and, they're, and their profiles are very brutal. And that could be one of the issues for the hook. All right, if you're a guy that, let's just say, if you're a guy that's a pretty good golfer, but you bring it from the inside out, and you're just hooking it, and I... And I say this from experience, from having a guy in here, very young golfer, very good golfer, just wanted to hook the ball off the planet. That blue shaft right there, the UB, was a killer of a hook. It killed the hook. I got this a dude that swung 120 plus mile an hour, deep from the inside out, and would take it out 20 yards and bring it, and it would land 5 to 10 yards on the other side. He played the hook. I'm like, dude, that is far too, you're losing so much by doing that. So I threw in the stiff flex, just the stiff, and put him in there, and he couldn't turn it over. All right, could not. Now I went with the X because it, we got it. And the other part was, the other part you got to look at, JP, is also the weight. If you didn't want to turn it over, you might consider a 70 gram. All right, that's the other part. Now, the last bit I would, ser I would also suggest is if you're hooking a club and you're playing it at standard length and it's causing your swing to be flat, then shorten up the club so that you can get up into a much better uh, swing plane, and that could also help you out. All righty. So what's the difference between two shafts, a lighter one and a heavier one, when they are MOI matched? Oh, wow. Uh, the lighter one's going to actually feel heavier in the head, where the other one will not. And that's number one. 
uh, the lighter shaft. So what MOI is, it's a measure of, uh, of a, um, as measuring of what they call a moment in time. All right, and that moment in time is predicated on the length of the golf club and the weight of the golf club. Now, if you can get the right length and a different weight, it, it's irrelevant because it's the same MOI. Okay. I see that being very hard to do, but it can be done. And that would be the difference. Hello, Mr. Ryan Tracy. How are you, sir? David Defoe. Defio. There you go. Bryson Shot 58. Jumbo Max Grip works. Yes, they do, sir. <laughs> I've got a set of my irons and I got it on my driver, and I just put one on my three hybrid with a shaft replacement, and it is definitely different. I am not pulling them. So I'm liking them. Is two to three with swing weight port, uh, normal to add because of epoxy? No. I also wiped down everything multiple times, taped the ferrules while drying, and still had leakage from the and ferrule creep. Any suggestions? Uh, wow. Um, all righty. So two to three swing weight points for adding just adding glue. That's a lot. Now, if you're using, because that's like four to six grams, if you're using tungsten powder and a lot of it, mm, you could account for more, but I don't know about three swing weight points. That's a lot. Uh, so I'd look at that. Uh, had leakage and still had feral creep. That one's a little different. Uh what I would suggest you do is, what I would suggest you do is, uh, the last bit is you, you guys have seen me build clubs is make sure that you tap it down. So you got the shaft in here and you're holding it and you beat it to where you know that that, uh, so that the shaft is seated. All right. So you know that it's seated in there and then that the ferrule is married up and then do the wiping down. Uh, if it's creeping out of that, I would consider using just maybe a little less epoxy because it's something, the, the exothermic reaction is certainly pushing it back up for some reason. Otherwise it shouldn't creep if you got it taped down. Thank you. Looked at KBS TGI. I also looked at MMT. There is the other one I was talking about. There you meant, unfortunately, Acker is difficult supply. Uh, recoil is another one. Uh, yeah, the recoil MMT is a good one. I like them. It's got it gives a little bit heavier feel for the other one. That's the one I like. Uh, not TGI, but PGI, as in Peter, not Tom. Uh, you might like that one as well. Dennis Hood, hope you all are well. To change swing weight, is grip weighting or head weighting recommended? I also heard about MOI matching. Yes, we did. Uh, if you're going to change the swing weight, the easier way, the easiest place to change it's in the head. It takes a lot less weight to get to where you want to go. Can you do it on the other side? Yes, but it just takes more weight. Yeah. That's what somebody else was saying. I didn't see any of this stuff, but it wouldn't surprise me. All right, here we go. Peter says, love to see a build voter. Interesting in how you align the shafts to the heads to get the best performance. Okay, here we go. Spine and flow for Peter. Now you don't care about you don't care about where the label goes, right? Because if we go with this, uh, the labels might be twisted. So you got to let me know that. If you don't mind the labels being moved around, we will get her done. They mentioned that many pros are going to a mid shaft putter length. Yeah, that was yeah. That's that's because of the uh, the jailbird and it being thirty eight inches, and those guys were going crazy over it. And and what you'll find is is that although I am sure that it works very 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 well that it will be a trend and most people will go back. 
Lucas Glover's from my hometown along with the Haas family, Jay and Bill. Well, good for you, dude. John Lamb, title issue 5053 iron. Don't really get along with the Hazard Black Factory shaft. Any thoughts on maybe an 850 GH Neo using them in my 4 and 5? Holy smokes, John. The factory black sh hazardous shaft can't be any further from the 850 GH Neo. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, I'd say that we need to change that out. Uh, if it's in the U Club. Oh, what do I want to use? The 850 Neo is actually a pretty good choice. Uh, I'd like to see, actually, I'd like to see you in a, in more of a, because the three iron is going to act more like a, this, the, the U iron is going to act more like a driving iron. It acts more like a driving iron. It gets closer towards, it, it bucks up into what I would call the hybrid area, okay? And at 850, so you're going to want like a 90 gram shaft, all right? 90 gram shaft max, Meh, maybe a little bit, but 90, 95 gram. And if we could find you something in this AD shaft, which I think they got, uh, the the AD has been a wonderful shaft to go into those things. Um, because it works. Right, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of another one. Uh, oh, that MMT that we were just talking about. The MMT comes in that 90 grammer. Try something like I'd try that one as well, and it probably fit right in. One of those two. All righty. Swing it, Christer. Talking about back problems. I went to see the chiropractor three days later. All the back problems are gone. Chiropractor also said I have like zero mobility in my hips. We well, keep going to see him, Christer. Probably get some of that back. Our little fires aren't making it too smoky down there. <laughs> no, not yet. We've had uh, we've been pretty good, but we've had a lot of rain. It's probably knocking a lot of it down. L to L has shown a lot on the Alaska Golf Channel. Well, I'm a Alaska fan, so it's not bad. But the L to L drill has been around for quite some time. Uh, though I think uh, Mike Malaska actually explains it probably better than most. Uh, you get some guys that will say just make L to L, and they don't show you what's going on. Where Mike actually talks about bringing it around and and getting to the L and what you're doing. I really like that about him. There's Jason. If I build a single link set and I get all the clubs the same total weight, wouldn't the MOI and the swing weight match? They should all, in effect, be the same. Now, the swing weight won't match the MOI, but they'll match each other, yeah. And the MOI will match each other one of the MOIs. So the answer to that would be correct. All righty. Except for the crank fire, Bryson also had the mini burner. Really, I had no idea. I haven't watched a I haven't watched the live event, nor do I plan on it. But cool. I like the fact that he uses different stuff, right? I think that's just cool. It gives, you know, it, because the the professional golfers are very, very traditional, and they're very much like a flock, like that thirty-eight inch putter. Uh, as soon as somebody wins, they go, "Hey, that's pretty cool. Let me give it a try." Next thing you know, they're putting, and they're putting with a, out a whim. And they're draining putts. They're going, oh, man, I got to have one. So now they get out and they have one. And they go to start draining putts. They're like, really, man, this is the best thing since sliced bacon. Well, that's until they stop making putts. And then they'll go back to something that they're comfortable with. But, yeah, it, I mean, it just goes to show that those guys are that good. They can use just about anything. All right. Ron D'Ambrosio. Technical question. Currently gaming graphite design tour AD DI6 on my TSR2 driver. Good shaft. Driver swing speed is between 97 and 101. Leaves, uh, leaves it right. Uh, 97 draws too much. But going to a 7S make a difference. Oh, 
Oh, 101 leaves it right, and 97 draws too much. That almost sounds backwards. Okay, so in this one, Ron, before I would switch, and I know I sound like a broken record when I do this, is I choke down about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch, then do it again and see if it's still doing it. All right, this what you're talking about right here is exactly what length fits into, and that's consistency, right? If you're if you're you know swinging hard and it's leaving it open, and you're swinging slow and it draws it, that means you're changing a lot because it's not going to be that huge. Uh, it shouldn't be that big of a, a change, particularly with a 60 gram stiff model, right? Now. I would tend to choke down a little bit and see if that doesn't come back. If it comes back, then you just need a, a new grip and cut it down and voila, you're good to go. Uh, if it's still there, then what I would look at is maybe the 7, you know, because you at that 97 to 101, you're right on that cusp of that S flex. You might, uh, the 7 might... Uh, if you can track, yeah, the seven, if you're, if you're slowing it down and you're actually really slowing it down, you might be losing it in your swing and a little bit extra weight might be the way to go. All righty. Daniel Coleman. So Ron's a new one on, by the way. Thank you, Ron, for joining us. Daniel Coleman, what do you say, sir? What's going on? Well, flattening the angle of my wedges helped me not hit the toe, hit it on the toe of the wedge. No. It will not. Uh, flattening a wedge. So let's do it like this. I got hey, a good prop for the day. <laughs> so if you're hitting it, let's just use extreme. Uh, if you flatten a club, it makes it want to go out here like that. All right. If you go to make it go upright, it brings it out like that. So you would want, you would want to make the club be more upright. Now, and the same thing applies. If you're swinging and you're actually hitting the toe of the club like this, then you would want to make it more upright so that when you hit it, it's more into the center. So in both cases, you would want to make it upright. All right, that was a good one. Gabrielle, that was a new one. Here's another one. Why would I change driver when the restitution coefficient is standard by the US uh, GA? Well, because, Gabriel, the restitution coefficient, or core, is measured now by, uh, not by the, it's not measured by the cannon, it is measured by the, uh, I call it the trebuchet, but it's measured by a, where it's held in place, and it's measured by contact time. And different makers, the contact time you know, as you're holding it, it's taking out all that technology and you're literally just measuring the face as this contact time hits it and then bounces off. Where when you were shooting it with a cannon, you you took a you literally took a club head by itself upside down and you shot a cannon at a hundred mile or shot a ball at hundred mile an hour and measured it bouncing off. Now you take this club and you hold it and it comes in and it hits contact time at a certain spot. And then that's all you get to see. So now what's happening is you, they're, they're being very conservative in their measuring. So you don't have to take the club apart. Nor do they have to have a pile of golf clubs at the USGA. And, and they're measuring it right there in the trailer. And out it goes back to you. What that does is that removes a lot of the technologies that are going on and behind it to make it faster with core and on target with contact time. And that's what's happening now. So you can get ones that will pass contact time and that's what they're using as the standard and will totally fail the core rating. So they're not all the same core anymore. So that's where, that's the reason why. Now, beyond that, Gabriel, the, uh, 
you know, the the size, the the weight, the eh, let me get it back. The the face angle, the the bias, and all that other stuff also come into play. All right. Brent Legnon. There's another one. Very cool. Digging on the picture, dude. Would a heavier iron shaft make the head feel less clicky? 85 gram versus a 105 gram shaft. Pro well, it will dull some feeling, but it will make it feel less clicky? Probably not. It would depend on what's going on. The uh, Let's say, for instance, this guy yet again. Let's say this was feeling clicky. It's raining really hard right now. It's feeling less clicky. Or it's feeling clicky. Would putting a heavier shaft in this thing make it feel less clicky? Probably not. All right. The uh, but if you're if you're not hitting it on center and you're pretty fast in your transitions, right? I know I'm waving it. <laughs> quick back, quick back. The heavier shaft might actually be better for you anyway. And then the click will go away because you're hitting it in the better part of the club. All right. Sweet. Uh, Christer's a guy with MOI. He likes that stuff. I will have done that on Friday. And we'll be shaft irons with the Apollo Phantom. Crossline jumbo grips. All right, man. Let us know how it works. I went back and looked at the spine flow video making a spine finder and used a laser pointer for flowing. Very cool. Yeah, the, the spine finder is actually, they're really not that difficult to make. The And the flow tool, I just bought some new quartets so that we'll be able to do that for Peter, no problem. I'm good as a cares that everyone makes some money at the end of every, that I, <laughs> I like to see that one, but I will like to see that one. <laughs> oh, very good. So, Peter, you'll know this one being a Navy man. I was just talking with another fellow that was a, a submariner, but he was part of a uh, carrier group, and he was the designated submariner guy that was with the with the group that would contact would talk with the submarines uh, as part of deployment like the surface guy would talk to the other surface ships as part of the deployment I didn't even know that thing existed but yet there he is being that guy I don't know if you had that kind of experience but it was interesting to hear that Ron you're more than welcome sir do I have this right shortening club changes the effective lie to be more upright Yes. I mean, I always get this backwards. Let me. I always got to look this one up. So if you made it shorter, if you made it actually, if you made it longer, it would make it the upright more long, would be more upright. If you made it shorter, it would make it go that way. And that's more about, and the reason why I say that, JP, is because of the way a person would stand to it. So if you made it longer, the club would be further away from you. As it got further away, it would do this. As you made it closer, it would go like that. That's why. All righty. Brent, you are more than welcome. And come back again. Tell your friends. Tell your family. <laughs> okay. Ryan, you're not using too much epoxy. You don't need a ton of it. And actually, it's not a good thing. There you go. Yes, more upright. I, you know, I always go back and forth on that one. But if if everything's the same, right? If, you, if everything is the same and you made it longer, it's got to go away from you and it's got to go up. Where the other one, it would come back and it would go the other way. Now, if you're... If you're short to begin with, and it was out here like this, and you brought it in, it would probably be better. That's just where it goes from there. It does me too, brother. I, I got to go look. I got that club making Bible for that. One of the very reasons is for that very thing. And, you know, the 500 plus pages, and I got two or three tabbed. And 
I got two or three tabbed, and that's one of them because I always go backwards to them. Always go backwards. In fact, I have to do this. You see me in the shop, and I'm going, uh, 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 uh. okay, I got it now. And I walk through it in my head every time. So it's just one of those things I've never grasped right away. Okay, it is 10 till 7. We have gone longer as usual. <laughs> We've gone longer as usual. My Apparently my cold has gone away. Thank you for tolerating me. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. And uh, don't forget tomorrow, 7 o'clock, my time in the Eastern time, uh, we'll be putting out the Tiger Wood Clubs. In order you can be able to see them, they actually are really nice. Uh, I noticed that it's got a little notch in the back in the center. I don't even know what that's for, but it looks cool. And we talk about grips. So if you got any questions on the grips, put them down in the show notes when you see them. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. As always, let's see your scores go low.